What up, Meal Prepping Nation? It's Bobby, and if this is the first time you're on my channel, you might think that meal prep is all about bland, dried chicken breast with bland rice and overcooked broccoli. Well, that ain't how we roll on Flav City. Here, we're all about flavor, because me and flavor are BFF, and bland food is banished from this kitchen. So today, I'm gonna show you how to meal prep like a boss. It's gonna be easy. It's gonna be healthy, but most importantly, the flavor is gonna be cranked up to number 11 because we are making my curry spiced chicken tenders cooked until they're crusty and golden, served with a pomegranate yogurt dipping sauce, golden rice cooked in coconut milk with ginger, garlic, finished with green onions and coconut flakes, and a spinach crunch salad with an orange vinaigrette and spicy crunchy peanuts. So if you love flavor and you love meal preps, hook a brother up and subscribe to my channel. I have new meal preps every Friday morning and I want you to join the community. In front of me, I have two pounds of chicken breast that have been cut into strips or chicken tenders. And in case you don't know me that well, I'm addicted. Addicted to spice rubs that is because they add an insane amount of flavor and this is just moochie curry powder. It's a type of curry powder that's heavy on the turmeric so it's nice and yellow. Normally I make a spice rub with four or five ingredients, but curry powder has like eight or 10 in there already. So it's like a complicated spice rub just done for you. But first I'm gonna reach for some salt and give a liberal dusting all over the chicken. Then grab a nice pinch of spice rub and dust it all over the top of the chicken. Now flip these guys over and do the same exact thing. Now, one of you loyal Flav City fans out there, tell one of these potential newbies watching why we never cook whole chicken in a hot pan or oven. Go ahead, I'll wait for you guys. Anyone? Ah, you're being shy. The reason we don't do that is because it cooks unevenly. It's gonna be tough, so we always let it sit at room temperature for 20 to 30 minutes. That way also the spice rub is gonna show that chicken who's boss and marinate deep down into the meat. So, let's put that aside and we can make my pomegranate yogurt dipping sauce. And yes, it is as money as it sounds. In front of me, I have one cup of Greek style yogurt. Low fat, no fat, full fat, it's all good in the hood. I'm gonna reach for a lime and zest about half a lime in here. Then I'm gonna grab one clove of garlic, but check out how I break it down. I use the same microplane zester here. I leave the paper on and the paper stays on the top side, protecting my fingers from getting grated too. And then when I turn it over, all the grated garlic comes through that side. Just slap it against the bowl. And once again, if you're new to my channel, you will notice that I grate and zest everything known to mankind. I use this microplane zester all the time. If you want it, I'll put a link down in the description box. Add one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil for some fruitiness, about a quarter teaspoon of salt, a couple cracks of black pepper, and because I want this to be a sauce-like consistency, and right now it's super thick, I'm gonna drizzle in about a tablespoon or two of water. And then just mix up everything and see if it needs more water. And then to get some pomegranate flavor in here, I'm gonna reach for pomegranate molasses. If you guys had this stuff, it is awesome. Basically, it's made by reducing pomegranate juice and sugar until it's a syrup. I'll put a link to it down below in the description box, or just call your grocery stores. You gotta get it. But if you can't find it for some reason, you can use balsamic syrup or make your own reduced balsamic syrup at home. So go ahead and drizzle some of that sweet elixir in there, and then just kind of marble it throughout the yogurt. I don't like to stir it in 100%. And we can't run the dishwasher for one spoon, so. Mmm, the Greek yogurt's tangy. The molasses is sour and sweet. Perfect amount of garlic, just punching me in the taste buds. That is gonna be so good for dipping the chicken in later on. Now let's make the golden rice because just like gold member, I love gold. So in my pot here that I'm preheating over medium heat, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil and then go in with half a red onion that's been finely diced. Immediately hit it with about a half a teaspoon of salt and a couple cracks of pepper. We're gonna cook that for a few minutes just until the onions start to get soft. In the meantime, when you guys make this recipe or any one of my meal preps, make sure you post a picture on social media and tag me because I love seeing your guys' creations. The next two ingredients will be garlic and ginger, but I wanna show you how I break down the ginger. I take fresh ginger root here with the skin on, and then I use a spoon just to scrape away the skin. It comes off super easily. And then what is Bobby reaching for? Oh, shocker, I'm going back to the microplane grater because it's the perfect way to break down this ginger. 
Ginger is really tough and fibrous, so all that hard stuff stays on top, and just the grated pulp comes through on the bottom. Go ahead and add two cloves of garlic that have been finely minced, and the ginger, which is about a teaspoon. So for next week's video, you guys decide. The top two requests have been vegetarian meal prep and snack meal prep. So leave a comment below. I will choose the one that has the most votes. And next week, I'm hooking you up like I always do. Now to make this rice gold, I'm gonna reach for one and a half teaspoons of turmeric powder. This stuff is so good for you. It's an anti-inflammatory and anti-carcinogen. Just add that to the pot and stir it in. Now here's the key, you guys. I'm actually gonna cook the turmeric in the hot oil for about a minute because you're toasting or blooming the essential oils in the dried turmeric. Makes it more flavorful. It's gonna make that yellow color even more brilliant later on. Now I take rice cooking super seriously, which is why I have a video for tips for making perfect rice every time. And the first one is to wash the rice under cold water for a good 30 seconds to a minute to get rid of all the excess starch. See the water? in the bottom of the bowl here, that's starch. If we don't wash it off, it's gonna make our rice very gummy or starchy later on when we cook it. And because my channel is all about flavor, I'm gonna add a ton of flavor to the rice by actually adding it to the pot before the liquid. This way the rice is gonna get nice and toasty and nutty. Coating it in that hot oil is gonna prevent it from clumping up later on. And plus it's gonna cook a lot more evenly this way. So always toast your rice over medium heat for one minute and keep stirring. Now cooking your rice in water is just fine, but why not up the flavor and the creamy texture even more by doing one cup of water and one cup of light coconut milk. It makes it so silky and creamy. So pour that in the pot, give it a nice stir. And then remember, cooking is all about seasoning at every step of the cooking process, right? So last time I checked, water and coconut milk are bland as can be. So I'm gonna reach for a good pinch of salt. I'd say about three quarters a teaspoon and then a few cracks of Flav City pepper to set it over the top. You can get these pepper grinders only in my kitchen, nowhere else. So come on over and you can crack away. Now check out that color, you guys. That is like an edible culinary mandala. All we're gonna do is bring that to a boil, immediately reduce it to a simmer, slap the lid on and cook it for exactly 20 minutes. While the rice is cooking back yonder, let's shift our attention back to the chicken. Just after 25 minutes, you guys, Look how that spice rub has really penetrated deep down into the chicken breast. Now it's time to preheat a cast iron pan over medium heat. I'm actually doing two pans, that way I don't overcrowd the chicken in the pan. And if you don't have a cast iron pan, it is one of Bobby's Flav City Kitchen Essentials. I make so much food in here, and the beauty of using this guy is it makes the food super crispy and crunchy because it retains heat like no other pan out there. If you don't have one, I'll put one in the description box below. I highly recommend it. Add about a tablespoon of olive oil to the pan. Perfect. Starting the golden brown crispy process immediately. Now, if you only have one pan, do this in two batches because if you overcrowd the pan, the temperature goes down and they won't get crusty. They're actually gonna boil in their own juices and all that spice rub will just boil away. Now, to prevent a pain in the butt later on for cleanup, I always use one of these splatter guards. It is the best $10 you will ever invest. And when I put it down on the pan, it's gonna prevent that hot oil from splattering all over my counter and my floor. Once again, you know I'm gonna hook you up. I'll put it down in the description box. Now the beauty about chicken breast is look in that pan. They're gonna kinda tell you when it's ready to flip. See how the white opaque color is coming up around the side? That tells me it's time to flip and I haven't touched this. If you get in there and you start poking it beforehand, you're not gonna have the crust. And the crust is coming up. Wait until you see how golden brown this is. Oh, beauty, you guys. Look at that. Those are the spices seared into the crust of the chicken. Because we left them alone for about five minutes, they get crusty, nice and seared and golden, and that creates an extra layer of flavor. While the chicken finished for another five minutes on that side, make sure you guys check out the Flav City Facebook page. Every Wednesday at four o'clock Chi-Town time, I'm doing Facebook Live cooking demos. It's so awesome because you and I can interact in real time. You ask questions, I answer them. It's a blast. The chicken took 10 minutes total. Let's evacuate the dance floor. This chicken is looking golden and crusty and absolutely juicy. 
You guys, check out this chicky chicky wawa. Gone are the days of bland, dry, overcooked chicken breast because that is where it's at. We're gonna put the chicken aside and grab the rice off the back burner because it's done and we gotta finish it. Let's unveil our golden rice and check that out. Now it's super important to fluff this rice ASAP and it's really important to use a fork that the King Slayer Jamie Lannister himself would use or any other fork, whatever. Just go in here. And the reason why I'm using a fork is because the spoon would mash all the rice grains into each other and make it really sticky and clumpy. The fork loosens and separates every rice grain. Now the only thing that can make this rice even more over the top is, yes, I'm zesting again, okay? Hashtag obsessed with zest, that's me. I'm gonna put the zest of half a lime in here. That's really gonna make the flavors pop. Add a few tablespoons of green onions that have been sliced. And in case you don't know, I absolutely love all coconut products. I don't care what it is. So I have a few tablespoons of unsweetened shredded coconut flakes. Just add that to the pot and it's gonna reinforce that coconut flavor. And then reach for your Kingslayer fork one more time. Mix it all up and it's done. And now it's my favorite time in the cooking process, checking for seasoning, which is just an excuse to eat while you're cooking. You guys, that is 24 carats of golden deliciousness. That coconut milk is making the rice creamy. The rice is perfectly cooked through, nice and fluffy, and those herbs and lime zest at the end are making the flavors pop. That is so good. The only thing we have left to do is make my crunchy spinach salad with spiced peanuts and a orange vinaigrette. It is a bomb.com salad and so easy to make. This is how you do it. Add a shot of oil and a pinch of salt to a quarter cup of peanuts. Then add half a teaspoon each of cumin, smoked paprika, and then a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Mix it all up, then add it to a baking sheet and bake at 350 degrees for eight minutes. Meanwhile, chop some baby spinach and add that to a bowl. The peanuts will have a nice spice crust when they're ready. Give them a rough chop and add them to the bowl too. Add in half a cup of seedless cucumbers that are chopped, two carrots that are peeled and grated, and a quarter cup of dates that are sliced. For the dressing, add the zest and juice of one lemon to a small bowl, along with the zest of half an orange and the juice of a third. Go in with one tablespoon of agave nectar, a small pinch of salt, a couple cracks of fresh pepper, then add two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, whisking constantly until the consistency thickens up a little bit. You guys, those spiced peanuts add so much flavor and texture. The spinach is super tender and those dates are nice and sweet, but don't dress the salad until right before you wanna eat it or the morning of, otherwise the spinach will get very wilty and soft. I've got my glass meal prep containers and a literal buffet of goodness in front of me. I wanna dive into that because it looks so good. Let's grab some chicken, tuck that in the corner, perfect. Then grab a nice amount of salad, put that right next to the chicken, and then grab a couple big scoops of the rice and put that in the container. All five containers are done. The last thing to do is hit it with some of that Greek yogurt pomegranate sauce right before you wanna eat it. And then I'm gonna drizzle over a little bit of molasses and look how good that looks, guys. That chicken is banging, y'all. The curry spice has so much flavor. The chicken is not bland, it's not dry, it ain't overcooked. It's super juicy and moist. That is awesome. The chicken can be kept in the fridge for up to five days or you can freeze it for two to three months. When it's time to heat it up, I take the lid off the container, I put tin foil over the top and pop it in a 400 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. The rice can stay in the fridge for five days or that also can be frozen. Same reheating instructions as the chicken. For the salad that obviously can't be frozen, that'll stay in the fridge undressed for five days. And like I said earlier, when you wanna eat it, dress it right before or the morning of your maiden shape. That's it, you guys. The recipe is below in the description box. It's gonna hook you up, so let me know how you like it. Also, subscribe to my channel for new videos every Friday, hooking up all my meal prepsters around the world. If you wanna see two more videos that have juicy, delicious chicken also, check out the ones below me. Hashtag keep on cooking, peace.